to any in-person events during the COVID pandemic times. But um, prior to the uh, pandemic, I mean, I used to go to SAWC, which is one of my main ones I go to pretty much every year, at least one of them. I go, so SAWC, the Symposium Advanced Wound Care, yeah. um, which has podiatry, MDs, DOs, nursing, and everybody. And I usually go to that one every fall in Vegas. Yeah. And um, so that's one I pretty much been going to for the last three to four years, probably going on five years now, honestly. And then, um, of course, ACFAS, um, I go to, used to go to every other other year. So networking was pretty much my number one reason. And then, of course, you know, number two is always the destination. So depending on where, <laughs> like where it's at, kind of more attractive as well. And then third, of course, the educational set. It was like a refresher. So that's the thing of why I enjoy conferences even before the pandemic. The networking aspect was kind of how it goes. Or like even interact, even if you're not necessarily doing business with the person or, you know, there's anything transactional, but just human, you know, human interaction, uh, adult conversation, things like that, you know, just kind of re you know, talking to someone in the field, kind of, you know, similar interests, things like that without, you know, cause you know, you can always talk to your friends about things like that, but you know, um, not necessarily may not be as passionate or even like even in the field like for podiatry you know every i love wound care but most of my friends don't love wound care and even though they're podiatrists so things like that so if you're going to a track that's catered to wound care or you know wounded his sense or things like that it kind of helps and then if you like it like i said if you're at the exhibit hall with industry someone else that sells these products you know they're passionate about it because you know um it's just kind of how it goes because yeah if you try to talk to a person that sells screws about wound care product they don't really care because it's not you know beneficial to to their you know particular interest so definitely yeah uh, you come back re-inspired um because i mean yeah you know um basically that monday i came back and i was just like ready to grind and start uh doing products and things like that and just kind of doing techniques that i heard in some of the lectures and literally so that's another thing too because there's always new techniques that's been developed so you learn that from a practitioner side and um so that's yeah you, know, you truly do come back and destinations may be a bigger target even though i know there is a lot of guidelines with cpme approval for only using a destination to attract the uh, providers but i mean we have to be real i mean we all know that providers suffer from mental health burnout um we saw you know i, I lost colleagues to COVID 19 um both near and far and um it takes a toll mentally and i think maybe we should consider the fact that maybe those the fact that it is in Hawaii may attract me to come versus me just clicking onto my computer. And, you know, maybe I could bring my family or whatever and I stay a couple of days extra or let's say that the, the lectures end at two to allow us to go have a day out, things like that. Those are going to be the the, the um, conferences that survive um, this new, you know, evolution of CME. Because um, like I said, it may be here to stay. I We don't know when um, COVID will be I noticed it just wasn't many young providers being able to attend in-person conferences even before COVID-19 you know because um the cost that was that factor so like you said even though the destination is nice sometimes the destination does impact the attend the you know the cost for an attendee to come which is like someone like a resident or a fellow or even a young physician straight out you know in, straight out of residency or fellowship getting ready to practice because they're like, oh, you know, if it's in, let's say, a place like, just say Hawaii or Vegas, where you know the cost of the hotel and the flight is going to be kind of expensive, they're not even going to be there. So you're not even getting that audience. But like you said, if you're in toes in the sand or somewhere where they can drive and they can come, those, you know, those interactions help as well as um, for to get the younger dogs. And I think one of the best best ways to get younger dogs is food still. <laughs> so, <laughs> so if they have a little mini bar with some little hors d'oeuvres in the exhibit hall or something, then you can still get the uh, you can get the young. The young. And even though, you know, it is sometimes it can be industry like and sales pitchy, um, you, sometimes you need that perspective to make your determinations for when you go back to practice. And um, yeah. even, I mean, otherwise, sometimes you don't, you need that almost that bias perspective. It's not necessarily bias, but 
that company's information to pitch it to the hospital or pitch it to whoever is your materials manager to tell them stats that because that most people wouldn't be able to tell you in a regular lecture because it just not it would be kind of you know skewed towards bias if they didn't mention it in a cme lecture but they can mention that in a non-cme lecture and they tell you well it's the only product that's uh, fda indicated for you know diabetic foot ulcers that alone may help but they the cme lectures they may not mention that too much because they may either feel like they're Lean, making you biased towards this particular graph over another, things like that, that usually little nuances that uh, that you notice between industry lectures and non-industry. But um, also, so I will say in the smaller shows, you probably do um, probably do better with face-to-face -face interaction in the exhibit halls. But yes, in the larger shows, those, pri those dinners and things like that will um, be more beneficial. I think even before COVID, that's kind of how it was going. Obviously, there's a price tag to both of those. You know, exhibit hall is a lot <laughs> more feasible than uh, sponsoring a dinner for you know, X amount of doctors. And, you know, sometimes they bring, you know, a staff member with them as well that does the ordering or whatever. And that's the um, caveat. But, um, yeah, it depends on the meeting. So, like you said, Toes in the Sand, where it's like more organic experiences. APMA is a little bit more organic, where if you're at the exhibit hall, you can, you know, you're actually talking to the people. But then you get to these massive um, conferences like SAWC, where... I mean, the exhibit hall is like a football field. And so you kind of have to like strategize which ones you're going to go to. And, um, you know, then they got to make sure your rep is whoever's, if, you know, from your region is there at the time. Otherwise, you know, if it's something like that where they're trying to do a transaction. So it's, it's tough. And I'm, I'm sure that, you know, the logistics of bringing that many team members in and all of that is a little bit more expensive um, for both the company as well. So, yeah, but it's, I would think um, if I had to choose one, I would still say Exhibit Hall is the way to go. Most conferences I noticed that succeed with the Exhibit Hall make the Exhibit Hall like the main attraction, like in the actual conference experience. Like you actually look forward to going to it, like SAWC and ECFAS kind of was ex good at executing it, especially places like New Orleans and, uh, you know, those big trade showrooms that they have where they kind of interact with where your lunches is being served there things like that and it's a little bit more of a different experience than when it's like you just kind of walking over there and seeing what's in there it's it's, it's um it's a science too.